Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. Welcome to the resin and glass workshop. We are gonna be working on a project just like this today, where it's basically glass embedded in resin. And of course we've got some super fun glitter in there. So, you know, as you come on, say hi, let me know you're there. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, we're doing this special reprise edition of the workshop for GMT UK time and anybody in Europe or our early risers. So again, pop on, say hi, let me know you're there. Um, I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to kind of talk about materials before we get started. That allows folks to get online um, and gather your materials, right? Because sometimes if I just go straight to it, you may get frustrated and just be racing and, and instead of sit back, relax, and enjoy. So we will begin in making a project like this with um, collage. So the first thing you're going to want to have access to is Mod Podge, Collage Podge, some kind of like a glue type thing that's going to help glue that down. Next up, you're going to want to have your collage papers, and that's going to create these stripes right in here. I use sheet music because I have several opera scores worth of sheet music. So I just picked out a few that I like. This one has no words. One of these actually had the word love on them. The other side talks about war and I'm like, well, that's not interesting. And then of course you could also use other scrapbook papers, whether you have some toile or funny newsprint or handwritten recipes, I guess that's what that is. It doesn't really matter. You pick something that appeals to you. Another thing I really like is I found this, <clears throat> excuse me, I like a frog in my throat this morning. <clears throat> I apologize. I found this fun kind of like rose gold, um, tissue paper that has that has flowers in it and I thought this one might also be really interesting especially considering the color scheme that we've got so for the most part because I really talked about sheet music I'll probably mostly stick to this program um, and so that's what we're going to do first from there we're going to paint and we're going to be using like the cactus flower and the pink peony or peony pink so the cactus flower will be for the stripes. Then we'll, we'll do a little bit of dry brushing with some gold and some white just to give it a slightly aged look and keep it from being super stark. And then the heart actually underneath this is a bright pink. So I've done several versions of this already. You know, this one was, was that same peony pink but mixed with white and almost looks finger painted. And I used a ton of gold. So in some ways I really love this and in some ways I don't love this one so much. Oh, Linda says she's watching from Miami, collecting some beach jewels. Oh, to resin on her art piece. I can't wait to see that, my dear. That's going to be so cool. And then another version. <clears throat> Again, I'm sorry. My throat is not, it's not acting up or is not cooperating today. Um, I used black. But on this one, I personally feel like I used too much gold. But it's okay. It was fun. It was a dry run. And I used some funky glitter, which gives it a weird surface. Um, so the glitter I now recommend is a little different than these chunky bits that I, that I used. But as you can see in here, we have all sorts of weird things. So in general, for this project, I do recommend that we stay fairly small for your first time through. That way you don't feel like you're racing to keep up with me because obviously it's not my first resin project. Um, and I can go at a pace where you, if you have less space to cover, you can kind of, you don't have to worry about rushing. And if you're sitting there, you can look around, find extra materials. Okay, and so the colors I provide or suggest are truly just suggestions. If you feel that you wanna do yours in turquoise and teals and blues, by all means. In fact, uh, one of my friends just sent me a picture of one of the resin projects she did after doing, doing a project with me, and she did these gorgeous cobalts, and I mean, it was just really, really stunning. I was so impressed. I was like, man, I, I want one of those. Okay, so next thing you're gonna think about around as you gather your supplies is, do you have Scrabble tiles or little like letter beads? Notice this one doesn't have Scrabble tiles or letter beads. It's a little small, but that's something that you can do if you want. I also found in my collection a bunch of Milagros, which I, I'm kind of obsessed with Milagros. I have been since I was a kid. I don't know why. They're sort of weird and creepy and cool, but you know, here's one with like some fun hearts. And um, from Friday night session, one of my um, one of my folks, Kendall, used really cool um, key charm. And so if you have anything like that floating around, you can use those. And if you don't like the colors of these, you can totally paint them and then embed them and nobody will know the difference. Or if you have other fun, funky charms, there's all sorts of like trees of life and butterflies and whatnot. So I'm just trying to right now show you what some of your options are. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to use these, but I want your brain to kind of, you know, 
start churning. Look at, there's all these fun wings, birds, stars. Oh, this one has some keys. I love the wings. I might have to use the wings. Oh, a dragon or a thought or my kid is going to find these and steal them off from me. And again, wings, little word things. I got these from Michael's craft store. <clears throat> so there you go. That's just kind of some options for you. Let's, let's get started on this actual project. So to begin with, you want to get your Mod Podge out. And I'm going to go with, I think, musical notes here. And you want to make sure that you've got a brush worthy of Mod Podge. Something that, you know, if it gets ruined, it's not the end of the world. This is my Mod Podge brush. I've even, it's fallen apart like four times. I've painted the handle this bright blue. Um, I've had to re-glue it. But I know that this is the brush that is, is going to get ruined. And this is my brush for paint. It's a little smaller because it's a small surface. And again... Look how frayed and nasty that is. That's, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> enough talk. Let's do the thing. Again, I'm really just trying to give you guys time to get on, get settled, uh, especially when we do these, these big events. Sometimes it takes a while for folks to get in. So we'll begin by um, tearing thin strips of our collage paper. So you can do the musical notes. I really love how that looks. Can I, can I do tissue paper today instead? You guys going to let me do that? I want to do something different. In fact, I really just want to do blues and greens. But let's, I'm going to try the tissue paper see how that goes. <clears throat> I love tissue paper. It's like my favorite collage material. All right, I'm going to do tissue paper today. So again, so we don't like, we don't like sharp edges. So you've got to like tear a little bit to kind of get rid of the, the sharp edge oh my gosh somebody just crashed up there oh my one of my offspring children whatever all right so just little gentle tears so when you have like a soft edge like this it ends up coming out like it, it goes on better and this is actually probably good for two strips because i've got it folded in half this tissue is so easy to tear and work with it might end up sticking to your fingers a bit. And how many stripes did I manage to pull off? Five stripes. Okay. So again, I'm doing these. They're about one inch or so, give or take. Two, two and a half centimeters. Anyway. But you notice they kind of wiggle waggle all over and they're not exactly even. I love that look. We'll move this guy aside. And we'll get out the Mod Podge. I have, I have a big bottle that I just keep refilling. And I love to have just sort of a, a little tub of the Mod Podge. I find it makes it easier to work with. Also, I'm less likely to mistake it for white paint <clears throat> if I have it somewhere separate. So we'll begin with a stripe kind of just about an inch in. So you want to get a good coat of that Mod Podge kind of right on top of your, your wood. We'll come in with our collage paper, and that's going to be whatever you chose. In fact, you know what, because you can see the edges, I'm gonna go a little bit on either side, place it down kind of right there and just smooth it gently with my fingers first. And then come in here with a little bit of Mod Podge on the edge. So I'm using a wood panel. You can totally use a canvas panel or just a, a slab of like plywood, whatever suits you. You just want something that's gonna have kind of a hard surface. And since I'm here, I'm gonna kind of just coat right over that paper with with the Mod Podge. And then coming around this edge, bringing it down. And so we don't really resin over the edges, but the edges will show. And generally these things are so great because they, you can hang them all on their own. So uh, being able, you will be able to see the edges. So like on this guy, I totally, well, got a little bit of a oh, bare spot. But you can see I kind of painted. So again, musical notes, tissue paper, whatever you have that suits you, right? I've done musical notes a whole bunch. And I came across this pretty kind of rose gold colored stuff. So I'm like really interested in that today. And I tell you, now that I've done all this pink, I'm ready to go do some blues and greens and aquas and kind of and seashells. All right. So the piece I'm working with here is eight by eight. <clears throat> I do recommend you work even smaller for the first time. Um, but if you've got like an eight by 10, you know, canvas panel or a nine by 12 canvas panel, sometimes 
Those are the easiest ones to find or nine by 12 piece of wood. All good. It's just going to slightly vary the amount of resin that you need to use. But I think I recommended a large enough bottle that you really could mix an ample amount. So for this particular project, it's going to need a full, like total, total of two ounces. And that's one ounce of hardener and one ounce of, of resin itself. So a mixed, a total mix of two ounces, I guess is how you say it. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit five stripes on this. I think we're only going to fit four. These are a little bit wider, but that's good. It still looks cool. In fact, if I'm not careful, I'm only going to be able to fit three and it's going to be uneven. Oh no. You can find a skinnier, skinnier bit. Linda says she totally loves the gold and she's got to run. She'll catch it on the replay. Awesome. So yeah, this will be available for replay. If for some reason you can't quite make it for all of it. Sometimes timing doesn't work. All right, there we are. We're just getting it kind of squished on down. There we go. And I'm just doing a gentle tear, tissue paper tear so beautifully, just to kind of smooth the edges. And the last stripe. So I got a little wonky. I probably could have laid these out beforehand, but <clears throat> that's okay. We're a little bit wild west over here sometimes, but we get this. There we go. That works. Place him down. Not sure I got enough stuff over here. So we'll just add a little bit more Mod Podge off to its side. Oops. My placement isn't going to work either. I need to have enough to wrap around the edge. Okay, there we go. All right, so if you're just joining, don't forget to pop on, say hi, let me know you're there. Let me know where you're watching from. This, uh, <clears throat> this particular workshop is being broadcast specifically not only to the, um, the Let's Paint group, that's uh, my private painting group, but also um, to the Let's Make, or the Makers, Makers Gonna Make. There we go. You know, I knew I, I knew I had the word in there somewhere, the Makers Gonna Make, which is mostly a UK-based group. So hello to everybody who's there. Okay, so here we are. We've got the basic um, collage done. Kind of fun. Again, it's Valentine's themed. So now I'm going to literally just take take this guy and this is my Mod Podge brush and just allow it to kind of soak. Set it aside. While I don't love soaking my brushes, this is the one exception where I, I just let it soak. And we'll also break out the dryer. This is my Ranger heated craft tool. And a, a hair dryer would be perfectly, perfectly fine for something like this. I use this one because I'm always on video when I'm doing my art projects and when I'm needing things to dry. And it's very hard to talk over a hair dryer. So this is much quieter why that's why I like it. Plus it's really compact. And so it mostly dries by heat. Whereas a hair dryer is a little bit of heat, but it's also a lot of blasted air. This one blasts far less air. So you do have to be cautious in some areas to keep from like burning your surface or burning your, it's really more like burning and curdling your paint. Okay. So that's basically down and that's going to, I love this sort of white on the wood tone. It's going to give kind of a creamy texture as opposed to straight white. All right. So now go ahead and get yourself a palette, like a, a plastic, a plate or something to put your paint on. I've got one right here and oh, look at that. Those are all the colors we're using today. So I'll grab my cactus flower. Now, if you're feeling like you want yours to be different, if you love the black or you want it to be, you know, this color and gold, by all means, go for it. Like this is your project. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of white too. I think I'm going to go lighter on this one. So you can either do straight cactus flower in the stripes or cactus flower in white. I'm going to lighten mine up a bit. But I love the cactus flower because it's a warm pink instead of a cold pink. A lot of the pinks out there are very cold and they just don't appeal to me. So if you see, this is the white, this is the cactus flower, and this is sort of the in-between mix. 
So I can kind of, well, here, we'll start in here. And I'm just going to kind of come along to the edges of, of the, of the collage. And I love that kind of, I love the randomness of the stripes. Whoopsies. All right, let me just get this covered here. And you'll find if you're doing this on wood, even if it's got a little bit of that Mod Podge on it, it's wood's thirsty. And it's definitely gonna kind of suck up your paint. So you will need to do probably a couple coats. Let me rotate that so my hand isn't covering everything. All right, look, so I'm gonna make some more of that. And if your colors aren't exact, you know, as you're mixing them, it's really no big deal. The beauty of this is a little bit of randomness in the color and mishmash is fine. So we'll get the edges while we're here. Because for the most part, when we do a resin piece, we only get the resin on the top, but the edges, but the resin will always dribble a little bit. So you won't be able to paint after. So if you want those edges to have a sort of finished look or be less kind of jarring from, you know, or less different from the front, then now is the time to get it done. I'm going to come along in here. So I'm right handed. So it's, I find it easier to kind of come in and, and, and do this from the right. However, I hate kind of painting over myself because I feel like I'm going to drag my wrist through my paint. So we just kind of proceed to continue to rotate our canvas or our, our surface. And again, it's a, it's a harder surface because resin is heavy duty and as is the glass. And if you have a really flexible surface, I always worry about the resin. I mean, I know you can do it on canvas, but I just worry about long-term lastability. Oops, sorry, I gotta keep making more. So again, just grabbing cactus flower and white and mixing it because I like the light, the lighter version. In this guy, I went full, I went full bright on just straight cactus flower. But in this one, I'm feeling like it's going to be kind of fun to have a slightly lighter, slightly lighter look. And again, if you're like, I want to do this in turquoises and turquoise beads and turquoise things are all I found, then great, do turquoise. So um, the reason that we tear when we do collage instead of, of just laying something down with its sharp edges is that it, that tear tends to make it easier to blend in with the surface and make it less of a, a harsh edge and less noticeable. It kind of, in a way, becomes invisible when you don't have that sharp edge. And I like that. All right, so just kind of coming through and just getting those stripes done. And I definitely encourage you to see this as a technique that I'm teaching so that you can take this technique and apply it with your own color sense, right? I mean, if you don't love my colors, that's okay. Hey, Christy, good morning. She says that cactus flower is looking great. Yeah, so this is actually like a, a, a lightened down version. I do like this stuff. And I'm feeling a, a, like a lighter, paler aesthetic this, this morning. I'm also thinking some, maybe a little bit more gold would be fun. We'll see. Oops, I totally forgot the stripes on the top over here or bottom or whatever side it is. And for those of you stateside, this tissue paper is from the dollar store. Or Dollar General, no, Dollar Tree. So when I see that, what I see is my paint's a little bit splotchy. So I got a couple spots where I just want to come in and add a little bit extra. I'm going to give it a blast first though, before I do much more with a second coat. Oh wait, but I have some thick spots. So I'm going to smooth those. Okay. So I'm going to come in and give it a chance to dry. Because sometimes if you try to paint over wet paint, you just end up pulling paint up as opposed to... Um, as opposed to laying more paint down. It's very frustrating. And Christy says, yeah, the white calms the peachy tint. 
yeah, I'm feeling like a little more chill today. Although I think we'll still do a nice bright heart in the middle. Oops. A little paint chunk in there. I'm tempted to to do something a little bit more with the with the cac with the flowers and the tissues as well. So now I might even like let a little bit more white come through in some of my in some of my paint. Just kind of look, I'm really just blending. So I have a mishmash of like variations of colors on this brush. So I can just kind of so the focus is going to be more along the edges and ends of each of these stripes because the heart is going to take up a huge amount of that space. I guess I'll just get some here in case it shows through, right? So now it's kind of mishmash. It looks like, like I don't know, old English rose like chintz. Got that kind of shabby chic look going here by accident or on purpose. I don't know. So I might bring a little bit of that, a little bit of the even whiter tone stuff, the lighter bits, just kind of streaky along the edges. Ah, look, I missed a spot. Whoops. Been known to happen. So just adding like kind of mishmash white, like it's a little bit of a mess there. But there, oh, I like that. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to go straight into the white. I'm not rinsing my brush though. We don't really need to. I'm just going to kind of keep a light amount on my bristles, a light amount. We don't want it to be too much. I'm going to do a little bit of like white paint streaks kind of at the edges. I'm almost just kind of slapping the material to kind of soften. And so it's a partial coverage. It sort of lightens that the tissue paper or whatever surface you have there. Now, if you did musical notes or you have something that you think already looks amazing, then that's okay. Go with that thing. And, and you don't have to do the white streaking over it. I like this. So I feel like it kind of brings the whole piece into a little bit better cohesion. Hopefully you guys aren't like, this looks like my grandmother's wallpaper. Maybe it does. Maybe that's okay. Or maybe it's now our great grandmother's. Okay. Cool beans. So now we have this. I'm going to give it another blast. Oh, we have to do gold, huh? We get to do gold, not have to. Get to. Get to, get to, get to. Let's do the gold last. Just remind me not to forget the gold. We're going to do the heart and then we'll outline the heart with some gold and get some gold in the stripes. I think that'll be good. So we're going to grab the peony pink. Again, it's a warm pink. Most of this will not show. This is really a backing just to help kind of give the heart some contrast. So if you have a light background, you don't want the, the heart to just completely like uh, recede back. So I will tell you my first one. I'm going to go with this light one. Not my first one, but my first version of this. I did, I did the stuff on a white heart. And while I love a lot of the pieces of this, I feel like, you know, this guy's very hard to see, or he's just a little bit too everything pale. So I wanted a little bit more contrast in terms of darks and lights. All right. So let's just go ahead and draw a heart and you can do a skinny heart, a fat heart, a wonky heart. They don't even have to be even. In fact, sometimes it's kind of fun when it's, when it's not even. And I really like to recommend you take up as much space as you can. I know that we've just done all this work to get all these colors and these stripes and this cool background. But really, if your heart is too small on your surface, you're going to lose the impact of, of, the, of, the, of the, I mean, because it's a very simple design. It's going to feel lonely out there. If you make your heart a little bit bigger, so it really takes up space, you, the composition will be more pleasing. I promise. Ooh, stuff is very thirsty. It's like I put a bunch of paint on my brush and then it's like, nope. But again, that's some thirsty wood. Canvas is usually a little bit more, a little bit more forgiving in terms of taking the paint, but that's okay. And again, this is sort of messy and, and bumpy and 
you know, it's not perfect. It's not solid, but we don't really care because most of it will be covered up by all the glass bits, bobs, doodads, charms, shattered bits, chunky glitter, all the things. And even if you can kind of see the stripes in there, that's also okay. So even by itself, this is, you know, it's cute. It's fun. It works. But we're going to keep going. All right. I'm going to offload the paint from my brush and I'm going to give it a quick rinse and set it aside. And then we are pretty much, oh wait, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Duh. I promised you some gold. See? Hello, tape dispenser. Sorry. Yeah. So we'll go ahead. Ooh, yuck. Let me get a little bit more of that paint off before I put it in my paint water. Okie dokie. Setting that aside. Let's get some gold. Let's get some gold. Can't believe I almost forgot. Actually, I can believe. It's totally me. Mm -hmm. So the I recommend the uh, DecoArt Americana 24 karat gold extreme sheen stuff. Looks like this. I have it. I have, I have, I buy it by the tub full. So I tend to put it in a condiment jar for ease of dispensing and less, less junk to throw away. Okay. So I'm going to just dry off my brush a little bit. Okay. So for this gold, that sort of dry brushing that we did with the white, we're going to do similar with the gold. So we, I'm going to kind of focus it kind of in between. Oh, I got some pink in there. Well, that's cool kind of in between the stripes, kind of in that transition zone. And if you get a little bit, and because it doesn't really matter, if you get a little bit of that gold kind of into your heart, no biggie. I kind of like it like right in that in between, like where the two stripes, where the two stripes meet. And a little bit more of the emphasis of the gold along the edges. In fact, you could even kind of get some gold here and sort of just we go. So my hope is that despite the fact that we're following the same formula um, on this guy as we did for the other guy, just by varying kind of where we place the gold and how much of it and just the papers, this should look fairly different, you know, like obviously by the same artist, obviously, you know, inspired by the same concept, but, but changed up quite a bit. Okay. So they look more like a series. So now we've got all kinds of fun shimmery gold. So you have the option if you want to add a little bit of a gold outline to this guy. I think I'm gonna experiment with that. Actually, you know what? I don't like it, forget it. If you'd like a gold outline, go for it. I don't think I want one. I feel like the gold is gonna be, isn't gonna, it's gonna be the wrong sort of light, light dark amount. So there's just more spots along here where you wanna add gold or even a, few gold bits that kind of shoot out of the heart in a few spots. Not too many, but a few bits. There's something along here too. Of course, it looks really cool on the pink, but we're not going to see that. Okay. Good deal. The gold is going to look awesome, says Christy. Yeah. I do love gold. So if you wanted to outline it with gold, you could, and outlining it with gold might give kind of this effect. And it may be that with a darker background, it looks, it looks really cool. So you could totally go that route. I think I'm wanting the emphasis, like a little less gold. I love gold, but I'm just feeling like a little less would probably be good. And if you want, oh, hey, do we want to, I got all this gold extra. Should we do some gold along the edges too so it really doesn't look like all lonely and stuff? Or if you are feeling like a little crazy, you could even just make the whole edges gold if you wanted. That might take a spell. So I'm just going to kind of streak bits of gold along here, kind of in the same in the same way that we did on the top. Again, it just sort of ties the piece together. Bits of gold along here. And coming through a little 
little bit. So again, if you're just tuning in, we're working on the glass and resin project, but we're doing all the painting prep on the wood beforehand because once we get to arranging beads and whatnot, no more painting is happening. And Christy says, I love the contrast on, on both the pinks. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and offload. Yeah. And so one of the reasons that we choose this darker pink, and again, most of it will be covered up, is just so that it really shows, because we want that heart to be the center focus. And sometimes we use lighter beads and stuff or clear beads. And we don't want it to just sort of all become a mushy mush. So go ahead and get your dryer out. Hair dryer, whatever dryer, craft it tool, heat thing. And we're just going to make sure that the paint is really good and dry. So focus right now for getting your paint dry is going to be more on the heart than anything else and the gold bits that kind of come over the heart because a lot of this surface out here is really going to be just as you see it now so if you find that there's more tweaking or whatever that you want to do by all means you can do it if you want to write a word in here or anything like that you can so one cool option and again this is an option don't feel that you have to do it but so I bought this sort of set of pink beads here and some of them are fairly clear. If we were to place, we could write the word love under here and place the clear beads over them. It would look, it would show through and it would look pretty cool. So if I were to get a paint pen, let's see if I can pull this off. Is this my good one? It is, I think. All right. So if I do an L here, I got to kind of keep it small. L. Well, maybe cursive isn't my best bet. I don't know. All right, here. Well, we'll just keep going. Oh. V. Yep. Oh. Too close together, but no biggie. All right, we'll just dry that. So again, this is kind of weird and odd, but it does look cool because these the glass beads kind of act as magnifiers. So this is a thing that you could do if you, um, you could do if you don't have letters and you want to have some letters on it. So if I put that that over that, O, V. This one's like weird. I don't like that one. It wasn't shiny. So hopefully you can kind of see that. It shows a little bit. It would show even better. It shows better up close. Oh, sorry. There's my head in the way. Um, and my spacing isn't right. So if I don't like something, I say, if we say, hey, that one didn't work out, I always just cover it up, right? So if you write something and it's not your thing, you can move it. Could also probably write in white on this. Let's see. L. O. B, B. Now those might be really close together. Again, these are just options. I want to show you that what you can do. I think I came out not quite. So again, I'm a little on the fence as to whether I will keep these or just cover them over with something else. But if there is something that you want to preserve or say there's something really cool from your collage. Now I also have slightly smaller, um, clear beads, which might help here. I could do something like this. Well, that's almost too small. Oh, the O is cute. Anyways, hopefully that makes sense and you kind of get the picture. L O. L-O, maybe I can do it like that, big and little. So I have some that are slightly smaller. V, E. That's an idea, right? You could do something like that. You can't see this one. Let me see if I can angle it so you can see the E better. Not really. Well, whatever. Okay, but you guys get the idea. 
So if you like that idea or, you know, and you know, it might be better off to actually like lay these guys down so that you understand the spacing. I was going a little bit. Okay. Enough. So go ahead and grab your, grab some of your, your beads and things. Now you can just lay them out. So I think I'm going to actually cover over some of my stuff here because I'm not, I'm not really loving it. And so you're going to want to get like some reds, some pinks, and just start arranging them. There we go. See, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know. I could have an O under there. Sure. In fact, you could even draw like a heart, you know, somewhere and put a clear one on it. So you could design away like crazy. Have fun with this. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm totally just like riffing and doing my thing. This is your opportunity to just start arranging. And so notice I'm trying to create something that feels, feels random. Let's see, where's a good shiny clear one? This one's good shiny clear. So that heart shows, so we'll have the heart show. I like that. Maybe do another little heart right here. You don't have to, these are just options. And even though you can see the letters now, I can, they'll get covered up by all sorts of, of whatnots that are kind of floating around. You just place in your stuff. Oh, that's cute. And then the next thing I really recommend are something like buttons. So I love placing, no, not that guy, but like a couple of like gold buttons and stuff around. But notice this button, this is one of those ones that has the little loop on the back. Generally, if you have nippers or scissors, I've actually nipped these things with scissors, but I have nippers. These are from like my plumbing supply or something. It flattens it out a bit so it lays better. So here I can cover up some of my mistakes, like with that guy. Here's another fun gold one. And again, they look like metal, but they're, I think they're cheap plastic. So I can literally just nip that gold bit off and place some gold shiny buttons. And again, if you have other things you want to put in there, this one might be metal. I'm not sure. This one's a weird one, but he's cool looking. So we're going to try nipping. For this one, I'm going to close my eyes as I go to nip because, oh, look at that. Ugh, it was metal. I raided my mom's old tin of buttons. So if you've got something like an old tin of, of buttons, go for it. I, you might find some really cool stuff in there. It looks like it would go for like a Renaissance outfit. Something with gems. These always look cool. I know we sometimes find like cool shell buttons. There's these cheesy stars. Oh, Scrabble tiles I put in there by accident. Nope, I have one of those. An old red button while this is matte finish right now. I'll put him to help cover up some of my, my, my words that I didn't like. He will actually end up looking all shiny. Oh, and look, here's a little red star. That's kind of fun. So I try to kind of stick within a color scheme, right? So if we're going with kind of pinks and pinks and whites, I'm going to go with the pinks and whites and reds. Oh, an orange button. Would orange be weird in there? Yeah, I think orange would be weird. I also really love the shell buttons. I think like the ones that are actually like mother of pearl. I think they have such a great look. So these craft buttons I bought just at the craft store. So we've got some kind of peachy pinks in here. We got some hot pinks. And again, I know you can see some of my letters peeking out where we didn't maybe like what we did. I'm going to, those will be fully covered. And before I get too far, I'm also going to pull out some of my black letter beads and see if I can spell out the word love. And again, this is going to be your design. If you don't have the stuff I have, it's okay. You do what you can with what you've got. Uh oh, you just could take all day to find the letters. Okay, I got the O and the E. Now I just need an L and a V. Oh, is that a V or a Y? It's a V. Yes. 
So L shouldn't be too hard to find, right? You know, my biggest fear is I'm going to have like all these cool letters and I'll like use up all the L-O-V-E's and we'll be left with like a bunch of random letters that mean nothing and aren't useful. There's my L. Okay. So for something like this, you know, it can get kind of messy. Also having a little tub to sort of pour everything back into to manage your stuff is super helpful. So these are the black letters and they're nice and small. So they would work pretty well on a, um, they would work pretty well on a smaller, on a smaller thing. So here I can even place this like L. O. Now, if you're wondering why I suggested tweezers in a supply list, this right here, these tiny little guys, and then a whole bunch of the other things are the reason. Because now I can literally grab these with my, with a little bit better control and kind of arrange them. And so you're just going to kind of keep going. And so we, we really start with filling this up as much as possible with the big pieces, the big chunks. And then we go in after with the smaller pieces. So here's a fun pink button. I love this one. I keep finding versions of this. I think that's the last of them now. I'm using them. I'm going to nip his back too. Are you ready? Even though he's fairly flat. That flattens him out a little bit more. And again, these are massive nippers. I am sure something much smaller would work. Again, I've used scissors. I just, I have these. Oh, like here's a shell button. I love this guy. I love these. And so as you choose your colors, you know, you notice I'm going with a real variety of colors and you can, you can really keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it wide in terms of variety. Um, it makes it interesting. These lighter pinks are fun too. Well, I think I want to have the lighter colors a little bit in inland, so to speak. Cover my heart there so he keeps showing up. Actually, that heart looks kind of cheesy. Maybe I'll draw inside it with a little black. And I don't know, we might decide that looks dumb. I don't really know. We have time. And so they have like a lot of craft stores have like multi packs of, of like colorful buttons. And so you can get them like in the pink ranges, the blue ranges, the green ranges, the oranges and like all kinds of really fun, vibrant colors. It's, it's, it's good stuff. Okay. Now we can see our heart. That works better. Actually, I kind of like that white outline. I'm going to give this guy a white outline. Look at that. Ranger crafted tool. Awesome. Again, not selling it, just talking it up because I love it. it. Is so low on the sort of the blow factor that it doesn't blow any of my buttons or anything out of the way. It would probably blow lightweight glitter, but a hairdryer would have made all of this spread out. All right, so since I have Milagros and Keys. I think we could throw one or two of those in. Maybe I have a key I can throw in like right here. Oh, the cover for my heart. Put this guy on it, I think. Or do we do a little guy? I forget. I think we had a big guy on him. Yeah. So we could put a key in. I have a an angel of some sort, that's fun. We'll put an angel in here. Where do we wanna put the angel? Here, I guess, there we go. Now, because these are sort of lower lower ranging things, you're gonna to have to be careful and it's gonna there's gonna be a little bit of work to kind of arrange around them. All right, let's keep going. We wanna get more of these big bits kind of filled in. You want the colors to feel kind of random, or if you have enough colors, you could even go light to dark or dark to light. 
I'm not sure I would have the patience for that. It might make me want to scream. Some of these just plain clear ones are really fun because they'll just bring out the, the color that you already placed in there. Oh no, look at that. I'm pushing my, my L-O-V-E around. We might have to come back in and arrange these on afterwards. Maybe just layer them on top of some stuff. In fact, I'm going to just set them aside for now. It's going to drive me bonkers. I haven't had my caffeine today. Maybe that's why I'm like... Arr! So you notice the other thing that we're trying to play with here is having variations in sizes. On the other one, my other project I did the other day, I had one of these really big beads. These are super fun, you know, to plop in somewhere. The other one, I had the word faith in there from my music, and I really wanted to kind of frame that. So that's where I placed it. Um, let's see, what do we need here? Okay, I think we're just about ready to start filling in with the next level of shattered glass. So I'm gonna just do a little cleanup here, get some of these things pushed back out of the way. And it is important to just kind of clean up as you go. Let me see, maybe one or two more of these little clear guys. Because if you don't clean up as you go, you're gonna have a, a holy mess. I know, it's like the lesson my mom tried to teach me for years and years, and I just didn't get, but I finally got it. Finally. 40 some odd years later, but it's cool. As long as we learn it. All right. So again, kind of putting the buttons out of the way, getting some of the beads out of the way. Ah, so something I don't talk about too much, like gems can be really cool. Um, but generally they rely on their facets for, for being cool. And if you, um, when you cover them with resin, you kind of take away their, their facetness, their facets. And so they're less interesting. Oh, pearls are super cool. I don't know where the rest of my pearls are. I guess, oh, here's the second one. Plop another pearl in there. And then if you have inter Hi! interesting beads, you can plop interesting beads. So I really, I guess the key takeaway here is sky's the limit. If you have something that you like, add it in, right? Oh, here's a heart. How fun is that? This was probably an earring at one time. So old ratty jewelry, stuff that you don't love anymore. I'm going to put that in kind of like that. So this one has more charms than the other one. In fact, I don't think I've ever used charms in, in this project before. You know, place a few like little red, like Swarovski style, but hopefully less expensive beads. Another gold gem. I'll go right there. Okay. So now we have a mishmash. It's it's eclectic, right? We're kind of going for eclectic. Move this stuff out of the way. Don't think I'll need my paint pen. Yeah. Okay. Next step. Shattered glass. And this is the stuff. Like if your if your windscreen windshield shatters, this is it. However, it has a slightly goldish tint to it. The gold mostly won't show up. Now, there are a couple ways of doing this. I personally, with this size, prefer to place the gold pieces or place the big pieces in between. When you pour it on, you end up covering like all your smaller, flatter items like your buttons or your, your charms, keys, milagros, whatever. And then you have this whole unburying. And these make really awesome filler. They add texture. They add a little bit of glitz. A big guy. Can I fit him anywhere? Sometimes they come like they don't fully break apart and you get these bigger pieces. I kind of like those. But I think I've filled this guy in pretty well, so we don't really have space for anything too big. But I also like some of these bigger chunks of this broken glass for kind of helping flesh out the edges, fill out the edges. And you can have them kind of flat or sharp bits up. Either way, it's going to do wonders catching the light and just adding, again, a lot of texture and interest. So 
So this is the time when you put on some music or an audiobook, whatever you need to kind of keep your brain slightly engaged. And you can kind of drop into a meditative, kind of a meditative zone as you're just placing the bits and you're just looking like, where's a gap? Where's a gap? And for me, again, it's just like, for me, it's like decorating a Christmas tree. You just keep adding stuff until when you think the tree is full, you just find like one more branch, one more place, one more ornament. No, well, that's how my family does it. All right. I don't like that piece there. So this key, I might have to kind of like keep lifting him and getting him kind of up because he's shorter than some of the other stuff. And it may be that I even need to like, you know, put shattered glass under him and then just place him on top of that shattered glass. It, and this is what's so weird because it's like not weird, but interesting and fun about doing this. It's basically collage and the resin is the glue that holds everything together. which is so much fun, you know, because then you can really get a bit outlandish with the things that you find, the things that you use. We just keep going. A little bit of shimmer inside. So I've got some smaller pieces here. And these are just, I'm just looking at like, what do I have? And so that's why it does help to kind of use like the lid or have some kind of a, a shelfy thing or something that you can, a tray that you can kind of pull the bits and pieces from. And if you need to break out some reading glasses, I totally understand. I'm not there yet, but I could feel it coming. So you can lay them flat or on edge. I do like on edge because you kind of see all like the shattered and the bits inside it. It does keep it interesting. And so again, we're filling in in between little spaces here with the big pieces and then trying to kind of get a little bit going around the edges. And we do have one more layer of shattered glass to go. Or maybe. Um, I have two sizes. I have this, which is the bigger stuff. And I don't know if that's just how the manufacturer makes it or because it's technically it's thicker glass. So it is in general, larger chunks. The other stuff is the mirrored thinner stuff. Um, oh, Christy says I was listening to audible when I was painting yesterday. It was great. Can't wait to get back to it. Tell me about it. I'm in the middle of a book. Although when I make art, I find I need music. Cause I got to get in like or I like to have music because I really kind of get in a flow state. And I feel like it helps me tap into my intuition a bit and sort of my sense of like, you know, what goes where. And sometimes I get my brain gets over occupied by stories. But I'm with you, Christy. I plow through audiobooks like nobody's business. I think I'm on my third one this week. Okay. So I have my LOV here still. I'm holding it. I'm sort of still holding out on it. I'm going to shift gears into smaller mirrored stuff. And so this part, you know, it can be considered tedious, but it's also kind of fun. Um, so do be patient with yourself as you go through this. Now, here's the smaller stuff. It's the shattered glass. It's really much more shard-like and, and little, like... You wash your hands before you touch your face after using this, okay? Um, okay, and I'm going to start to just sprinkle it to fill in all, like, the little interstitial gaps. All those gaps that weren't filled, we're going to just sprinkle it. And then we're going to come back in with our tweezers and tweak some of, like, the buttons that can get fully buried, the charms, whatever else gets kind of lost. We can, we can fix it. 
another reason why having <laughs> why having the tweezers is really nice. Like my little angel just got covered up. So we'll we'll pull her out and bring her to the surface. But this little this stuff is like the filler. It's vase filler, it's resin project filler. And so even like kind of coming right here along the edges. Now notice I didn't get anywhere near inside that. No biggie. I can literally just kind of take my tweezers and use it to kind of just mow that stuff or mop that stuff right back in and get it inside the heart. And then we'll keep going. So kind of just get some more kind of along here on the edges. And this is fun because you don't have to be super accurate and then you can just kind of shove it. And I love that because it softens the edges and it really gives that Instead of seeing the crisp paint line, um, you end up seeing the glass. It creates just a full sh shattered glass kind of edge. All right, I've got like a lot of stuff right here. I just have to pour extra. Right, so I'm just gonna kind of sh sh get it get it placed, and then we'll shove it all into place. A little bit here, I want to cover. Coming through here, and just trying to corral it into place. And then I'm going to come back and just see what needs to be rescued. Like I've got a button here that's kind of cute. I think it being partially covered is okay. My key, I'm going to lift my key up. I'm going to put a little bit of the shattered glass under there. And then I think place the key on top. Yep, that's better. But having left a, a space for it was kind of a good thing. So we'll put the shattered glass and then move the angel on top. So I think this heart, I'm also going to put a little bit more of the little shattered stuff in and place it on top. And then if you want to just move a few of the bits off of buttons, if anything is like completely buried and you want to see it, but it's okay if stuff is partially buried. Again, you're just kind of looking and making that judgment call. We've got our two cute little sketched hearts that are kind of peeking through the glass beads. That'll be fun. And now we could arrange the words L-O-V or the, the word the word love on this. So you could do it, you know, out here, although it's so small, I think it's going to be better inside. So we'll put an L. Oh, yay. This might be the death of me. Try this again. So L, you want it to, it doesn't have to lay perfectly flat, but you don't want it to like fall into a crevice where it's going to get all funky. L O V Deep breath, Wendy. Don't freak out. The frustration is mounting. It's okay. All right. So it says L-O-V-E. It's very hard to see from far away, but that's cool because I kind of like it hidden in there where you come up on it and go, oh, hey, that's a neat feature. Or I didn't see that. All right, I found a bald spot. I'm going to throw a little bit more glass in there. Again, now's the opportunity to just see are there any bald spots where you can actually see just straight paint underneath inside that heart. If yes, here's where you drop some of this stuff in. Little tiny regular glitter is not advisable here. It kind of tends to float up on the resin and it doesn't show very well, which is super disappointing. Like this resin is, this glitter is amazing. Like if you put it glitter in, it means you want it. So I've got a lot of like glass bits and shards all over the space here. So you just got to be careful. 
I mean, I'm not really worried about cutting myself, but I'm obviously not going to touch my face either. Oops, I got a bunch of stray stuff over here too. So I'm just going to kind of scoop it back into place. What's the thing I wanted to add? Oh yeah, chunky glitter. We need our chunky glitter. So you have options, right? You can use an iridescent chunky glitter, which would be really fun and give it a very like uh, pale look out here. Or you could go with the pink chunky glitter. And so this guy is actually with the pink chunky glitter. You can see all that glitter in there. I just, I love that look. I think I'm not sure I can get away with not using my pink chunky glitter. And so what you could do is say, okay, on the pink stripes, I'm going to do the pink chunky glitter a little bit sprinkles like candy. And it's okay. If some of it gets on your heart, it, you know, it'll show a little here and there, not entirely. But the big stuff is better than the little stuff. Little tiny glitter, it just gets lost in the mix. This stuff has got a little bit of an AB, Aurora Borealis kind of mix to it. So it, it picks up a lot of fun colors in the light. And because it's inherent to the material itself, it does glimmer and shit, glimmer and shimmer. There you go. Glimmer and shimmer, glitter and shimmer. That's what I'm trying to say. piece. But if we wanted to add a little clear AB, we could do some of that kind of in the in the white stripes maybe. I don't know. Let's try it and see what happens. I'll tell you tomorrow how it looks. So this one has more of the little pieces. They might get carried away. I'm not really sure. I was trying to get like the big chunky bits in here. I seem to be grabbing onto only the little pieces. It's fine. Then, you know, you can just if it's stuck to your fingers, wipe it off over the top there. All right. Are you guys ready to make some mix some resin and do this thing? I hope so. So here's the deal. Things to think about because we're, we're moving into the zone on this guy. Um, you. So the space you're working in right now, are you willing to give up this space for 24 hours? If you are not, where is a space in your house that you're willing to give up for 24 hours? because you really want to allow this guy once you've poured your resin to set and you want it to set fully because if you touch it, even when it feels kind of touchable um, in less than 24 hours, you'll leave fingerprints and dents and, and non shiny spots. And one of the points of resin is to, for it to be all pretty and shiny. So if this is, so this is, I don't, I'm not willing to give up my space for 24 hours but I have a table just behind me where I know that I can very gently move this. So if you have, if this is not your 24 hour space, I want you to grab eight cups, plastic cheapy cups. You're going to set up four on this, in this area here for the initial pour, or you're going to move to your 24 hour space, whatever works for you. I'm on cam, so I can't do it. Um, and so I've got my four cups set up over there already waiting to go and let me get it let me get it where is it oh here we'll use the we'll use my finished piece as a model so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to bring this guy up on stilts and then we're going to mix our resin in fact we'll, we'll mix resin first then we'll do the stilts that way we don't risk we don't risk like making a mess i mean we're making a mess but less of a mess so you're going to get yourself a measuring cup. And this one is actually one that, you know, I think came with the kit and you, this one, I, I do reuse it. It's, but it's also throwable awayable. It's a cheapy glass, which I like. Make sure you've got some gloves. If not, you're going to have something like tree sap on your fingers that is going to drive you nuts and you can't just like wash it off. Where's my box of gloves? I usually set them out before I do a project that I forgot today, but I've got some spares in this other kit, so you're good. So popsicle stick is important, not only for stirring, but also for drizzling. Here we go. Gloves! I'm a firm believer in gloves, my friends. Firm believer in gloves. 
just makes this whole process a little cleaner, a little better. Okay, so for something this size, this is eight by eight, you need basically two ounces. And that means one ounce of the resin itself. So you may need to kind of get down on your side and really look as you pour it in. If you're doing a nine by nine by 12 or eight by 10, you'll be happier with three ounces. If you're doing a six by six, in all honesty, you only need, um, you only need one ounce, but I find that these things don't actually have, oh no, do I have even a, oh geez, this thing leaked. All right, well, we're gonna pour as much of this in as I can get and see how it goes. If I need to mix up more resin, I will. What you doing, cat? You know what, buddy? Now is not the time. All right, so somehow I misjudged how much was in my bottle. So I, no, 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 no. You little rascal, get out of here. I love you, but go away. Come on, buddy. Resin and, and cats don't mix. Mm. <laughs> Anybody else have critters that uh that like to join the party? All right, so I'm just waiting for this to kind of finish drizzling in. I'm sorry. For some reason it it's acting up. I have a whole nother batch of stuff, but it's a different brand, so I'm not quite sure I want to mix it. If I have to, we will. Just bear with me here for a minute. All right, so that's about an ounce, give or take. Good enough. Okay, so also, when we're done, because I do have cats and he gets into everything, or cat, just one, sadly. All right now I'm gonna pour the equivalent amount. So I have to go slightly less than two ounces. On mine, which means I might be a little short on resin. It's fine. I have a like a tub or a cover that I put over the entire thing. It's kind of a tall tub. Oh, and Christy says also getting resin on your skin can cause some pretty bad health issues because the um, chemicals are absorbed in the skin. Very good point. Very good point. This stuff is technically non-toxic, but I'm sure that doesn't mean it's great to have set sitting on your skin. Okay. So here we are with the resin. Right now it looks pretty clear, but I'm going to start mixing it. And so one of the tricks with this stuff is you need to mix slowly and you pick a direction and you stick to it. So I'm going clockwise. Now as much as my I naturally want to like switch, I don't switch. I stick to my one direction. And one of the things you can see here as this happens is it gets cloudy for a while. Yeah, so Christy, I only use non-toxic resin. These are all the art stuff. Um, and so it's really designed for indoor use. It's very low VOC. The odor is really mild. I mean, it's really, I mean, and God, I'm very sensitive to smell. Like I hate perfumes. I don't like most deodorants. Uh, I don't like air fresheners, spritzes. And so this doesn't bother me, which means it's, you know, pretty good. All right. So one of the things that's on, and you're going to want to read the directions on yours, but it says stir until there are no swirls left. And so as I look in this, this has that kind of almost shimmery pearlescent look of like a bowling ball. And as you stir gently and slowly, luckily, a lot of the bubbles that were in there from the pour go away. But it's also kind of cool to sort of hold it over your project because it's still got a bit of a cloudy look. Oh, I should note what time we started doing this. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say we started stirring at 11.09. So about a minute ago. And so sometimes it'll say three minutes or four minutes or whatever for your for your stir and combined time, sometimes up to six minutes. I also do it just by, by look, like I really keep tabs on it. Like I can see lots of 
swirls. And I can tell that I have two different chemicals in the process of combining in here. And so just bear with me, this, this takes a while. Oh, Christy says, remind me to tell you about my UV resin experience. Oh boy. Yeah, I would love to hear about that. I think hopefully it's not like a horror story. Yeah, yeah, smell is a thing for you too. Yeah, smell really matters. So like most over-the-counter like, you know, deodorants and whatnot, I'm like, oh. Well, there was, I want the natives. I really like the native stuff. Like that doesn't bug me. Because it doesn't smell chemically. Like anything, like, yeah. So I had all kinds of high-end like Chanel and other fancy perfumes. And I just couldn't deal with them. So I gave them a, I gave them all away. So sad. All right. So this is starting to clear up. I still see some swirls inside it. And so it is really helpful to just continue to watch. And I realize this is the boring part, you guys. Like, but at the same time, I do it live. And I allow you to see the process so that you feel more comfortable. And sort of, I hope, have fewer sort of like, am I doing it right questions. And so as I look at this, like I still see swirls, but it's starting to be much more transparent, right? You remember how it was cloudy earlier? Well, gosh, it's so much glare but we're starting to be able to see, see through it a little bit better. So I'm still seeing just a little bit of, a little bit of swirl. We're getting close though, almost ready to pour. And I really wanna just whip this sucker, but you can't, you've gotta go slow with your stirring. And what that does is it helps, you know, ensure you don't have too many bubbles. Um, now I'm not overly particular about bubbles. But if you have a major bubble problem, you can use like a blowtorch. Yeah, I did say that, like a, a blowtorch, a gas, butane, whatever. I don't like that. I don't want to deal with fire. And so I would rather be slow and steady right now so that I don't have to use fire just to make it work. But, you know, if you're doing like a deep resin pour that's supposed to be completely clear and, you know, you know, some of those cool projects you see on YouTube then yeah, that's, you might want it that way. Okay, I think we're ready to actually add it to our project. One more sip of hot cocoa while I'm here. Move your stuff out of the way. Ugh, right. Okay, so now this is really becomes like a drizzle thing. Okay, yeah, we're good. So we'll take this stuff and we will just drizzle. So I'm going to drizzle over the high points and also stuff I really want to glue in place, like the word love. I don't want that going anywhere. So I'm going to get that guy embedded now. Then I'm just going to literally come through and just gently drizzle, drizzle over my key. So always start high, right? Because the stuff will travel down. And it does spread out. So just drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Like these pearls definitely need a good drizzle so that there's something there to kind of hold them in place. And we always start on the glass and internal portions first, wherever you're, wherever the most collagey stuff is. We'll get some over our little glasses with the hearts. And this is also pretty slow and meditative. I kind of love this part. Just gently drizzle. And if you're looking at like, how is that possibly going to be enough? And how am I going to get good coverage drizzling? You'll be surprised. But oh my gosh, the whole like resin drizzle thing is so satisfying. Oh, and Christy says, she, oh yeah, yeah, you like perfume, but it sets your allergies off. Yep. And yeah, so other, other than a blowtorch, yeah, you could also use a heat gun. Um, but in this, I find like you can't really see the bubbles, so I'm not super worried about it. And we've got so much pattern and whatnot going on. As long as we're mostly smooth. 
And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that I can pull this off with enough, enough resin. I'm just shy of, of two ounces because I did miscalculate what was in my, what was in my bottle. But I think also I had it like it leaked out a little bit. That's fine. If I'm unsatisfied, I can always wait for this to dry and then come back and do a second, a secondary pour to smooth out anything that's, anything that I missed. I just don't want to mix brands because sometimes there's just minor differences. All right, so we're just drizzling. You can already see a lot of the gaps are kind of filling in. And so where I'm going with like, if I don't have enough resin, um, I know I have enough to cover the, the heart. And it might be that I just have a few little bald spots along the edges. And again, that's, it's, that is not the end of the world. You just want to get this main part, you know, done first. And then, you know, if the perfectionist in you wants to take over, then there's ways to do, ways to, ways to deal with, with that individual. Ah. Another point I did not mention is you get about 40 minutes to work with this stuff. The drizzle technique is great for this. Thank you. All right. So now that we've mostly drizzled over the heart, I feel like it's pretty good. I'm now going to start kind of drizzling gently around. And as I drizzle, I'm going to allow there to be gaps in that drizzle for now because it's going to settle. And so I just slowly kind of work my way around, work my way around, drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. It, it does run out. It will or dribble out. I don't know. What am I trying to say? Oh, shoot. I totally forgot to put this on the cups up high. Well, that's fine. We'll get it on cups in a minute. See, I get all excited. I'm like, oh, it's time to drizzle. I'm going to drizzle. So to dry, you want it on cups. It's less important here. Um, and also when you're done, you're probably going to want to clear up your, like your surface that's covered and just throw it out. All right. So it's kind of a, a mishmash of coverage here. You can kind of see it's, you can still see, it looks like I've just drizzled glue, like clear glue all over the place and you can still see the lines and that's fine. Just keep going with your drizzle. Once you run out and I still have plenty more in here and we don't ever pour. Not with something like this. We drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. So again, this is like super meditative. And so having a light nearby is also going to be helpful because sometimes it'll help you see, you know, any spots that you miss. Like I have a whole section right here. I didn't realize it didn't kind of get up near the edge. So just drizzling back and forth in lines, kind of creating, creating lines. And much of it will even itself out. So that's why I'm not thinking about it being too even just yet, just trying to get, you know, kind of equal coverage in most areas and it will often fix itself and then we can come back in and make the minor tweaks later but i'm noticing there's a few potholes for lack of a better term here and i maybe just want to get a little bit more and it's okay to even just kind of tap it to kind of fill in those fill in those gaps i still have plenty more to drizzle so i try not to get wrapped up wrapped around the axle on that yet Sometimes it's easy to fixate on stuff, right? Anybody else? Just me. A couple of potholes here. We'll get those kind of filled. Every so often your glitter floats up to the surface and it will actually give you a little less smoothness. So you can use your, your little stick a little later on, kind of once we've got majority of the resin actually laying, laying out. Um, and you can kind of push the glitter down. I'm almost out. 
see if I can drizzle just a little bit more in a few spots. Oh, this whole edge here is desperately in need of resin. So even when you think your cup is out, you can often find like a few more drips. I'm just going to kind of come through and look from the side and get your head in there. And so the only places that I don't have really great coverage are right along the edges, which is fine. I can scoop up a little bit here and kind of plop it. And here's where you can kind of just touch that, touch that um, resin to help extend it right to the edges. So I feel like I'm about a quarter of an ounce shy, which is about right, because this one is like utterly perfect at two ounces. And I didn't quite, again, I underestimated what was in my, was in my bottle. Oop, I knocked the thing and just knock it back. So if there's a chunk of resin on my, on my surface. I'm just going to scoop that up and put it on here. Rotating. So I love my plastic cups as stilts later. Although right now it's nice not to have it on stilts. Here's a spot that's a total gap. I'm gonna get that guy filled in. So if you have a gap that's inland, so to speak, like near this guy, you really wanna make sure that you've pushed resin up to that. Because sometimes the resin will recede a little bit um, and leave kind of weird, it'll still coat everything, but it'll, it'll leave weird little, like again, pothole type things. And so I would rather have, if I'm going to have potholes on this thing, I'd rather have them at the edges rather than right up next to my design. But again, it's less of an issue when you, when you use the right amount of resin. But I'm going to use some of this and kind of spread it, spread it, spread it, spread it. So again, if I get potholes near this edge, I can always come in and tune it up with a little extra if I'm, if I'm feeling it. Or next time I do a project, if I have just a smidge extra resin, I can also come in and just go right over it. But I have gotten all the way to the edges. I think, oh gosh, I love this. And that glitter embedded in there is so pretty. I feel like I don't have the best, um, the best lighting for you to show this off. But so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like literally lift this up and place it on stilts. into everything here but I'm going to keep my gloves on while I'm handling this for a while right because it's this will it really takes 24 hours to cure you know to handle and then another and 72 hours to be really like done done so I can kind of see pink marks where I did this guy and I can just place him like so on the cups and now if we get any further drizzles or drips, it will come down and it won't, and then this guy won't stick to my table and then I won't be like tearing the whole thing up or having these weird drizzles that stick out, which trust me, I did that once and I learned my lesson the hard way. So the stilts really, really matter. Okay, so from here, if you're like me and this is, and this is your 24 hour, you know, dry spot where you plan to leave things, I'm just gonna clear a little, Order around it, you're then going to want to cover it up. Let me go grab my tongue. And I love just a good plastic, you know, like storage bin. So you want one that, that extends as taller than your thing on stilts. Uh, it'll be this guy. And he's wider, but he's nice and small, so he doesn't take up like all my space. But I literally just place him down. And there's what three inches above him and a, like an inch on either side and so now i can leave it like this and you saw my cat come visit i don't have to worry about him in fact one time i did a project like this and i found my cat sitting on the tub and i was like oh well good thing we covered that and again you don't want any kind of animal getting into this especially while it's wet because the resin will stick to their paws or their whiskers or whatever 
And you also run the risk of a little bit of the glass coming up and, you know, any animal that cleans itself with its tongue, you know, no guarantee that they would not inadvertently swallow that. And we don't need that. So again, just protect your animals, protect your space, protect your home. And there you have it. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, hopefully you found this to be, you know, even easier than you thought it would. And look at this little heart with a little white outline with a black and this one here too. They're kind of subtle, but they're there. And I really like that. The love is a little bit hard to read, but again, I feel like that's one of those fun, oops, gosh, I just hit my camera with my head, sorry. But I feel like that's one of those fun features or or things that you wouldn't notice till you get up close. And I'm really, I'm really, when I do projects, I really love the idea of being able to see things up close and far away. And so, and, and having, you know, a different kind of effect on you as you come in. So it should look good from far away, but then you come in and you're like, oh, wow, I missed all that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Anyway, you guys are awesome. I will see you next time. Pull one thumb out to... I can touch my screen and turn it off, but I'm going to keep my gloves on because I am going to move this to its final, like drying and curing zone. If you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comments. Um, this will be available for replay for a while. Inner circle folks, this will be available as a replay forever. All right. See you guys later. Bye.